All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Brad and Kyle channel. And in this video, we're going to be talking about why it is important to use your legs when you throw the bowling shot. Mm. Stay tuned. So we need to tell you about our favorite hydration company. It is our friends over at Element. So Element is a tasty electrolyte drink that has everything you need and nothing you don't, which means a lot of salt and no sugar. Element, you can basically stay hydrated without any of the junk. So no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no fillers, nothing, just electrolytes. Yeah, so I've been using Element for about a year now, and to be honest, I don't know what I would use if I didn't have it. I mean, if you're a, an athlete out there, if you're looking to be a, a bowler, a professional bowler, if you're looking to stick to a low carb diet, or if you're just looking to get properly hydrated or to get in shape, you need a good hydration packet that actually just has all the electrolytes. It's so simple, the flavors are so unique, and they're so simple and they're delicious. Yeah, we have five flavors here. We have raspberry, orange salt, grapefruit, watermelon, citrus, and they're super easy to use. Comes a little... I actually have a chocolate. You have a chocolate? I have a chocolate. I haven't tried the chocolate yet. And to be honest with you guys, my favorite flavor is actually the chocolate. Seriously? <laughs> it is so simple and delicious. It's the morning cocktail for sure. Right now, Element is offering a deal where with any order, you get eight free samples. So, with any order, you get eight individual samples. Uh, I, would, <laughs> I would say it's a pretty good way to try them all, huh? <laughs> Go over and grab yours at drinklmnt.com. Drinkelement.com slash Brad and Kyle. We'll have the link in the description. Go support our saltiest sponsor, <laughs> our friends over at Element. Back to the video. All right, so there's all different kinds of facets in the bowling game but we've heard a lot like use your legs your legs are important no upper body this kind of thing why is that Kyle? well our legs are a lot stronger for one than our upper body and you watch all the guys that create power and that can do it consistently and change speeds and everything they're all doing it with the tempo of their legs they're not doing by pulling with the arms and everything they're using the power that is generated with the legs now in general we would say that and the way we've all been taught is the more upper body you use, that's really what is all the moving parts. You know, if you're con trying to control everything with just the upper body and the arm, well, that's all moving. You know, like it's getting behind you, you can't even see it. But if you can focus on the direction of your legs, the speed of your legs, how you're getting into your slide, if you can focus on that, well, then everything that you build, the swing, that all just happens. That's all science. Like that's energy and flow and and whatnot, it gets complicated. Especially, I mean, ball's back here. I mean, how, how, are you gonna yeah. be, how are you gonna be feeling back here? So that's why once you get the ball going back here, you focus on the legs the rest of the way. And then that keeps it simple and that'll help you keep it free flowing. Yeah, so I wanna talk about uh, one issue that I have or one problem that I see with a lot of bowlers. Um, first off, we're gonna go a general overview of footwork. When we do footwork, we obviously want it straight, but as far as tempo goes, we want our first two steps to be nice and controlled and then progressively get faster. Now we're gonna show this on the lanes, but the one thing I see a lot of, it's actually a problem I have, so I'm gonna show you guys some drills and stuff to help work on it, but when we go into our slide and we're off our power step and we're coming through, one thing we see a lot is that in bowling, we wanna keep our hips engaged and a lot of the power comes from this motion right here. Getting our shoulders and hips engaged and coming through. This is, if you can utilize this, it's where it's, it's the holy grail. Yeah, it controls everything. It controls your whole body. So one thing we see is when people are going this slide and this trail leg is coming back, this trail leg likes to migrate close to the top of your slide foot. The f imagine an imaginary foul line here. This trail leg likes to come really high up. Well. Watch what happens to my hips. Instead of my hips being here and staying engaged and keeping them low and stable, when this trail leg moves, my hips pull open and pop out of the shot. So when you see guys fall off shots and don't have good stability at the line, a lot of it has to do with the control of this trail leg. So if it, instead of being here and sliding and this trail leg sticks, stays back and my hips are nice and engaged, closed, stable, not moving around a whole lot. Instead, what happens is it gets here and naturally, like when I go to put my leg over there, you can see my hip pulls out of it like this. 
So we want to alleviate that because as soon as you pull out of it, for one, you're not going to have the power that you want. And this is going to cause you to be inaccurate down lane. If you're right at the bottom of the release and your hips are pulling out of it like this, that's going to allow you to have misses that we don't want to have in the game. Have you ever had the problem of fouling with your trail leg? Was that you? So when I was younger, I did. Okay. I'm not as, I don't do it as much now purely by loss of flexibility, but my trail leg still gets too far up. So imagine there's a clock around me. When that trail leg gets to like nine o'clock, that's bad. We want that trail leg to be closer to like 7.30 generally. And you watch a lot of the guys today that have a lot of power, especially one-handed. Kevin McEwen, we all just watched him win $100,000 on TV not too long ago. Look at his trail leg when he bowls. It's right here. And there's no one that generates more power with a bowling ball one-handed than him. EJ tagged the same. EJ likes to get his trail leg up a little bit, which obviously we don't teach that for the basics, but I'm not gonna tell EJ what to do. But even his trail leg doesn't get up and towards nine o'clock. It gets up and it stays right here behind him, closer to like seven o'clock, 7.30 yeah. on that clock. He's, so, he still finishes the shot better than everyone in the world. <laughs> yeah, and you watch all the guys that have a lot of power one-handed and come through the ball. Their hips are stable, just like this and they rip through the ball and the hips are not pulling out. And a lot of that has to do with the control of that trail leg. So we're gonna do two, I'm gonna do two shots here. And this is good because it's something I wanna work on. Now the first shot, I'm gonna overemphasize my trail leg flying too far up. And then the next shot, we're gonna fix it. So here we go, trail leg, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I'm trying not to do. <laughs> and we're gonna, this trail leg is gonna fly way too close to the foul line. You're already uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh God. Dude, even that, like, when I'm trying, like, if, if someone to tell me, hey, get your trailer closer to the foul line, I just feel like I'm like this. So you are. I mean, on that shot, your elbow and hand, like, just completely wrapped around it. It had no yeah. choice. And that's the miss I feel because this is something that I've, I've struggled with for a while. So now, all I'm going to do is, and we'll be able to see it in the video, when I follow through, I'm not really worried about the direction of the bone ball. All I'm focusing on is keeping everything else the same. Tempo, footwork, swing. I'm not thinking about anything except when I, my trail leg, when I'm coming off my power step, be hopefully a little closer to where it needs to be. So again, keeping everything else the same. And this should help stabilize my hips. Get more power. All right, focusing on that trail leg. That's all I'm thinking about. Yeah. Yeah, and look at the difference in ball motion. It's still over there. Yeah, it's still over there. And dude, I thought I tried to keep that thing at like six o'clock. But if you come up here, Dennis, a little bit, haven't moved yet. This is where I finished. Don't look at my foul. <laughs> Don't look at my foul. Roast him. So the shot before, I, I was as you can see, this is where we ended here. I would still like to get closer to a position like this. You can see my hips naturally close. As I go trail leg, go further up this way, my hips open. That first shot, my trail leg swung like way up here. Look where my hip is pointed. It's just open. I have no power with it. I have no control. Back here is a better position or where this is about where I ended. I would still like to get to like right there. Yeah. Ideally. So working on that trail leg, trying not to get it to swing open as much. I know we're trying to drive off that power step, which Brad's going to talk about here in a second, but trying to get it to stay here because it dictates so much of what your hips do and what power you can create. And you can see from shot one to shot two, the first shot was bad, elbowed, it hooked early, it went way, it didn't stay on line. Second shot actually went light. Yeah. More power right in front of me. It actually and felt pretty good. It did, and it can actually be a skosh better as well. Like just in terms Definitely of a skosh better with more practice. So Brad, what's, a, what's, a, what's, a, what's something we can work on to try to create more power with our legs. So now we, we talked about the, the timing step, uh, the, the step before the, the slide, small. The reason, because if you, if you have a big power step. Uh, power step, then you jam yourself. You, you don't allow for a powerful slide. You almost have to take this itty bitty slide. Um, and if you're taking a massive uh, power step and then also a massive slide, you're way too far back. So we need, that, we need that step to be small just so we can have the space and the time to do what we need to do. Now, 
you know, we just had a Brian Kyle clinic this past weekend, and there was a girl named Karen who uh, did this. You know, she would get up there, great physical game. I compared her to uh, Leanne Barrett back in the day, just real nice and simple. And but then she would get to the line and then just kind of do this like really relaxed. Now, when you get that relaxed at the line, when you get step and then just kind of this, you know, really easy going style, oh yeah, you're gonna have control. You know, you're gonna have control of your body because it's not doing much. But that doesn't help you in terms of creating power, uh, generating some off hits, you know, shooting those really nice 250s that you feel like you didn't execute very well. You know, all those things happen because we generate power. And the difference is she would kind of not drive into her slide and I would want her and a lot of other people to focus on taking that timing step and then really emphasizing driving in to this slide calf muscle that you have. Just as much, like you're, you're actually taking this timing step and pushing off. You're not yeah. just kinda, you're not just going up there and throwing it. Because yeah. when you don't push off, when you don't try and generate the power into your legs, that activates too much arm. It leaves too much time for arm. So if you're up here kind of babying a little bit and then you're placking a 10, well in your head, well I need more power. Well what are you gonna do? You're gonna use your arm. <sighs> Try to pull down. Yeah, and there was a time where uh, Anthony Simonson bowled Jason Lamonti in the playoffs around a four and he had the front 10. And I remember him telling us his only thought, he's got front 10 playoffs to make the, the final match. His only thought was use your legs. Use your legs, use your legs, use your legs. And you're talking about a guy who has all the tricks in the world. I mean, everything that guy could do to a bowling ball that we need, that you need yeah. to do. And the only thing he's thinking about and the most important time is use your legs. And so that just tells you, you know, you can't baby what happens here. Uh, you can somewhat baby the arm to, to gain like some control, but if you baby the arm and the legs, you're dead. You have to use your legs just to open up all the things that you could do you know, with your release. So to me, when I hear that power set and what you just explained, if I was gonna go work on it, I would, for one, we're, we're just doing this in practice to try to get that feel of what it used to, feels like to use more power with our legs. And I'm taking that short power step and I'm really gonna feel the weight on this power step. I'm not getting off of it quick. I'm really feeling the weight and I'm pushing off really extending off that power step, yeah. if I have that correct. And a lot of, yes, and a lot of people, the bodies are different, right? So not everybody has great knees, not everybody, you know. So if you're someone struggling with, with knee strength and stuff, yeah, you might have to strengthen your legs to allow for more, a little bit more drive and pressure. Um, but you have to do whatever you have to do if you want to become a better bowler, because we need that drive and we need that power going into the slide. All right, guys, well, I hope those tips of using your legs to create more power were, was helpful. Again, practice these two things. Don't let that trailer leg swing all the way up. And then throw some shots. Try it in practice to really drive off that power step. Yeah, we appreciate you guys for watching the video. Thank you, as always. Hit that like and subscribe. Support our membership. Head over to bradandkyle.com. We appreciate you.